What's happening guys and welcome back to another Sunday Scan. We're going to stick with the same format that we did last week where I spent the first half of Scan really running through all the names that were in play this week, catching you up on what's been going on in the markets. Uh, and then later on in the episode, we're going to bring on Cody for the main watches and he's just a perfect person to have on while the small cap market is heating up. There's been a ton of uh, runners, there's been meme plays, penny stocks and everything. So he has a great perspective on a lot of those topics. Uh, so before we get into everything, Investors Underground is running a flash sale. They were technically supposed to close it, but they left it open for the Sunday Scan viewers. Uh, the room has been on fire. Uh, all these moves that are happening, things like uh, FFIE, the warnings, it's just been so on point. So uh, we really want to bring in new members. Pe we want people to be able to learn, to be able to apply these concepts and to become better traders. So if you're interested in joining a community, then I highly encourage you uh, to check out Investors Underground and you won't beat these prices that they have going on. So check that out uh, in the link below. Uh, so let's get right into it. We had a ton of exciting things happening uh, this week, especially with the meme runners. So we had things like GameStop, uh, AMC. Uh, we had Roaring Kitty on Twitter, you know, come back from the the proverbial dead and, you know, really resurface for the first time in a couple of years since uh, the last meme run. And we just had a lot of craziness. So um, Judah and I were talking about uh, GameStop last week, how we thought that, uh, you know, it ramped up, it was holding nicely, and it just felt like there was news coming or like there was something a little bit different with it, as opposed to just a, a retail crowded name that kind of spikes up and then putters out. Uh, and then that's exactly what we got. We had some news with uh, Roaring Kitty uh, posting on Twitter, and uh, that really sparked the entire meme frenzy again. So massive moves uh, you know, all the way from uh, about that 10 or that $15 level all the way up to 80 at one point. And these are the kinds of names that once they get a huge following uh, behind them and you have things like with the call options being bought, you have the gamma run on uh, the gamma runs uh, going up. And that's basically where people are just piling to call options and that hedging activity from the market makers can help to drive it up. Uh, so we just had a, a crazy, crazy week with all of that. And there's a couple things that I really want to just uh, hammer home uh, with these scans and with these types of moves. And that is just it's OK to wait, especially if you're trying to get the backside of a move. You really don't want to be fighting something on the way up, especially when you're in a new market cycle. Uh, over the last couple of years, I feel like short sellers have done extremely well because the small cap market and a lot of you know the meme names, the theme names, they all they spike up for a little while and then they're they're easily faded back down. And I think we're coming into a new market cycle where things are going to hang on longer. They have more range than uh, people anticipate. And in order to be able to uh, trade that safely, especially if someone is a short seller, it's about being patient. It's about waiting for confirmation and not trying to nail the top or nail it for social media purposes or anything. But it's just because it's a good risk to reward trade. And so if you look at uh, something like GameStop, you know, how many people got exhausted on on the way up, you know, just trying to fight this thing, trying to short it. And you really had it holding trend fairly nicely uh, for days until, uh, you know, you really had that big crack and then it started to ramp back up, have that follow th failed follow through and uh, trickle back down. So that was a, a huge name that was in play this week. And it's really almost made a round trip at this point. And uh, they announced that they're doing some kind of uh, ATM offering on it. So you know, once you have people on the wrong side, once you have the company starting to issue some shares, that's when really the backside is starting to uh, play out. But uh, it can really run up quite a lot on the front side. So that's just something to be cautious of. Uh, and um, following suit, you had AMC that was trading in tandem with that. Uh, you had some people on Twitter that were you know running this as well. And it's a very similar kind of theme or a very similar time to 2020, 2021 in some regards where, uh, you know, you get these followings that can really push a stock. And as long as you have a group of them running, uh, you can kind of keep track of the different ones to see which has relative strength and which has relative weakness. And I know some people out there had some really nice trades, both on the front side and on the back side of these moves. And again, it's not about developing uh, a huge bias, but more just being open to something with a lot of range waiting for the setups, being patient, and then being able to either capitalize on the front side or waiting for that blowout move, the failed follow through, wait for people to get on the wrong side, have it flush down, have it retest, and then you still have plenty 
of range. And that's just the last point with these is when you have so much range, it's better to be late than to be early because uh, you can be much safer and still get plenty of range on the downside. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind. Um, a few other things that we're running with the, the memes, SPWR, same kind of concept, uh, just in different price ranges. So, you know, you have a, a larger or a mid cap with GME, and then you have some of the very small caps with SPWR, and that was really running in tandem with those. And the exact same concept applies. You have huge range, be patient, wait for failed follow through. Uh, or if you're playing these on the front side, if you can identify a theme early on, and look at the you know the top three or four or five names that are running. As long as the other ones are holding trend and they're soaking up dips, you can uh, have some confidence on the front side if that is your strategy. And so it's really not about you know just waiting for the backside, just trying to get the front side. But it's it's knowing that when something has massive range, there can be massive opportunity. But to keep an open mind and just look for your spots where uh, you have a strategy to capitalize on it. Uh, another one that was moving, and this was a crazy one, uh, FFIE. I think this one caught a lot of people off guard, and uh, Nate was doing a great job of warning people about this one. And it's just, I feel like names like this run when a cycle is turning. When something very new happens, uh, it catches a lot of people off guard. Because again, for the last couple of years, most of the time when you've had these you know, wild runners, they haven't gone quite that far. And a lot of times uh, when they start to roll over, it's a pretty smooth move on the downside. But this was just a name that started to trap and trap and keep trapping. And what that means is that you know, as you can see this move running up, you can see how many times it flushes and you can see those bottom wicks and it tries to go down and just get soaked back up. And what that really is a sign of is the demand wall rising. And so what that means is that a lot of times when you have a small cap uh, spike, you know, you'll have an initial huge uh, buying surge. You'll have people pile on uh, trying to catch uh, a further move. You have longs that then get, you know, a very high average cost. It'll flush down. Now they're underwater. Now they're scrambling to get out and you have that clean backside move. But when you have a name with a ton of volume and this had tens of millions or hundreds of millions of volume with it, you know, and you have that churning, it's a sign that there's unusual demand in there. At the same time, a lot of people were counting on this, uh, you know, getting delisted and other things. And so a lot of people have the goal of shorting it and getting a huge move on the backside. And so when you have that combination of a ton of float rotation, unusual demand, plus, you know, a lot of people are buy a short on it, that short, uh, you know, interest and those shorts hammering in, it's a type of deferred demand if the move is not ready to be done. And what that means is that if people are just shorting, they're hammering in and it keeps getting soaked back up, now they have to cover at some point and that adds to the already crowded demand. And so that's how you can have some of these moves. And this went from, you know, what was it, five cents all the way up to four dollars. And so these are significant, uh, you know, massive moves. And again, if people are trying to play these on the backside of them, I just can't stress enough to be patient and wait for those dip and rip candles to be, you know, rejected and get below those levels. Uh, you can see every time you had these big you know, flushes down, they got soaked back up, they started to base again, and then they moved towards the highs. And you can see these kind of different stages of when this is moving. And you can just draw lines, you know, underneath these areas, you know, this is support, this is resistance, it bases up, now that resistance becomes support, it bases up, does it again, 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 and then, you know, it's once it flushes down, and then it starts to retest here, that's when you can have that backside of the move. And people can try to shorten to the parabolic, but again, uh, especially in a market like this where you have things running more than usual, you have to be very careful and very proactive because otherwise uh, something can go against you much further than you think. And so uh, this was a wild one this week and definitely one to be cautious of. Uh, CRKN, same story, uh, very small uh, market cap, very small uh, share price, and they're just having massive moves right now. And that's just the theme of the market. And so again, you can see there's opportunities on the front side. If you see this volume starting to come in, if you can pick up on the theme, whether it's with short interest, whether it's with uh, people on Twitter promoting it, or it's like you can find the different uh, causes of why something might have unusual demand and then try to tap into that.
So that's one way of trying to play these on the front side if that's part of your style. Uh, and then there's a couple other ways to play this too. And one of those is with the bounce plays. And so a lot of times with these very small companies, you'll have these run-ups and then you'll have that massive flush. And like we were just talking about with FFIE, you'll have these names that trap. And so a lot of people are waiting for them to flush. And once they do, they start to hammer in short. And then you have all the longs bail. And then if it stops going down and it starts to uh, perk up a little bit, you usually are going to have a lot of short covering and you might even have some bounce uh, buyers come back in. And so you can see like this move here, this was over a 50% drop. Uh, it went into some uh, support looking left and it immediately soaked back up. And so uh, if you're watching for those you know, big flushes, uh, you can actually get long on some of these as long as you have a tight stop underneath and you know what to look for. Uh, but so that's an opportunity either on the front side, the ramp, uh, during the dip buys, and then on the eventual blowout, the failed follow through, and then you can clearly see the backside in, retesting, failing, retesting, failing, and then they're usually a round trip. Uh, another one, DUO, same kind of story, uh, you know, small market cap, small stock, uh, ramping up, and this one's consolidating. So instead of having that uh, large run up, trapping constantly, and then going higher, and then the eventual failed follow through, this one is more flagging and in a range. And so, uh, you know, until it breaks out of this range, it's hard to have conviction one way or the other. But if this were to ramp up and start to base above these levels, then you could uh, assume that it might have a continuation move. But if it, you know, stuffs up here, flushes down, and then starts to stuff into this range here, then you could have that failed follow through and a round trip. Um, RDDT, Reddit, this was also in play with the meme stocks this week. And this is something that Judah and I had talked about uh, last week. And Judah had a great thought on it where uh, he could see, uh, you know, a symmetrical move kind of forming the left side of this, uh, you know, long term V and then the right side going up there. And so his thesis was that this was going to build and then go up and test the highs and maybe even uh, break through those highs. But that was a great thought from Judah. And again, it was just it was a theme with AMC, with GME, uh, you know, all the original Wall Street bets kind of uh, traders uh, and Reddit is associated with that. So just finding these common denominators can really help, uh, you know, piece together some of these moves. Uh, Neo, this was uh, volatile this week, had some, uh, you know, building on the front side, and then you had some flushes down when they were talking about uh, some tariffs, some uh, EV uh, tariffs with uh, China and some other things. So opportunity uh, was abundant in a name like this too. And whether it's someone's looking at these points to really trend it on the front side and then waiting for like a breaking news kind of trade when that news dropped and trying to play the backside of that. But that was also in play this week. Uh, Mara, this was on watch, and this is something that uh, I am interested in into next week as well. Uh, Bitcoin uh, had a really nice recovery from the, the low to mid 50s from a couple of weeks ago. It's up towards 67. Maybe we get towards 70 again uh, this in this upcoming week. And I think that you could have some of these names that have been making higher lows. They have lots of range, but they're making higher lows and they're coming up on kind of a resistance point. And if we start to base above that and break out, then I think that we could have a significant move higher. So that's something that I'm looking for. But uh, again, whether you're trading it uh, bullishly or bearishly, there's opportunity there both with equity and with options. And uh, NVAX, this was another one that we've been watching for a couple of weeks. Uh, again, it ramped up, it kind of is flagging and it's holding, you know, this area used to be resistance flushed down and now it came back and it's starting to act a little bit more like support. And so this is a range bound stock now. And so if it starts to base above this upper level, I could see it moving into that $20 range. And if we get below here, then it could be a failed follow through situation and starts to trickle back down to a round trip type of move. So plenty of opportunity there. Uh, Mullen, again, this name is almost perpetually in play. They have headlines, it ramps up, it fades, it stuffs, it has the backside. So uh, this was another one that was in play this week. And uh, you can see, you know, these areas, you can just draw a line on top and you can use those as guides. Whereas, uh, you know, if anything is building above it, you can assume that it might be starting to build higher. But if it's just stuffing into it, and that means it's just it's testing that level, it might sh uh, shoot through a little bit, but then really just flush back down and you can get some great trades on the backside of these moves as well. 
uh, CGC. Uh, cannabis had some breaking news. Uh, it's kind of the, the similar theme that it has been for the last couple of weeks where you have the uh, the schedule change from Schedule 1 to Schedule 3, and you basically just have different parts of the government uh, reiterating that. Uh, but something to keep in mind is that that is a long process, and it'll be a multi-stage process in order to do that. And so you can see that CGC has been building for quite some time, but on those you know, breaking news pops, almost all of them have faded back down. Uh, so, you know, if you're a breaking news kind of trader and if you're quick enough, you can ride the way up. But then as soon as it starts to have some failed follow through, that's a time to be cautious and possibly even play the backside of the move if that, if that is part of your style. Uh, AG, this is a silver mining company and you actually had silver was up about 5% on Friday and it's uh, testing the highest levels that it has been since 2013. So silver, the commodity is uh, definitely one to watch. And I think part of the reason why that's moving is, you know, you have the gold theme, the crypto theme and silver, and those are all kind of inflation sensitive assets. And especially if you have uh, inflation sensitive assets, while there's a, a hot kind of small cap market, that's a recipe for some of those things to break out. And so something that I'll be watching for continuation on the upside is AG, and that is a silver mining company, and that has leverage to the price of silver. And so just like the Bitcoin miners are tied to the price of Bitcoin, uh, you know, most of the time, uh, silver stocks are going to be tied to the uh, spot price of silver. And so as that builds up, uh, as the spot price increases, the margins of these companies increase and they can go from being, uh, you know, very difficult businesses to actually pretty good businesses if the price gets high enough. And so you can have some significant moves in some of these stocks. Uh, Baba, some of the some of the uh, Chinese names have been more in play over the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, China has been a mess for the last couple of years. And I think you had so many people kind of wash out and leave that any any new capital flowing in, even if it's just for a couple of months or even if it's just for a period of time, uh, you can really have some significant moves on the upside. And so again, just using you know those trend lines, the higher lows, you can see that these names are continuing to build. And then if they start to stall out, they have failed follow through, if some of the news changes, um, you know, over the next couple of weeks, then you could have a nice round trip back down. But as long as there's positive news and there are money inflows, then you could have this trend for a while. And uh, Baba is just one of the names. You also have things like PDD, and that actually has a nicer chart in my opinion. Um, and you can see it's just a slow build over many months. And so if you start to break out above these highs, or you know, really test these highs and then build over it, you could have some nice continuation. So China is on watch for me. Uh, again, more just as a trading vehicle. This is not a place that I would be looking to invest long-term funds. There are serious problems with China, in my opinion. Uh, but as far as a, a trade goes, uh, if there's opportunity, if there's range for short-term things, uh, I'm happy to trade some of that. Uh, CB. So Warren Buffett announced, or Berkshire Hathaway announced, uh, through their 13F filing, and that's just where uh, funds that have more than 100 million in assets disclose what are their holdings. Uh, and CB, which is Chubb, was a uh, significant new holding for uh, Buffett and for Berkshire Hathaway. He bought about 6% of the company or so, and so this one had some breaking news. Uh, once that was released, and you can see that this is in a steady uptrend, so that could be on watch for some continuation uh, with some of the large caps. WMT, Walmart, they had earnings. They did well. Um, you can see that they're uh, they're growing. Their margins are pretty good, and uh, they're doing pretty well in this environment. So uh, just, again, watching some of the earnings uh, players. Last week, we talked about some of the earnings names that gapped down and kind of recovered or stalled out, but there are some names out there that are gapping up and holding and flagging on those. So that's something to take note of. NVIDIA, they have earnings on the 22nd. That'll be a market moving event, 100%. And, um, you know, in two ways. The first way is it'll move the entire AI kind of sector and theme. And so one way to really capitalize on that is to watch uh, SOXL, and that's just the levered ETF for the semiconductor names. 
but um, it really just depends on how you're trying to play it. If uh, someone is playing this with equity, then you could play that anytime. But if you're playing it with options around earnings, the premiums get so expensive that it can make them uh, poor trading vehicles or poor vehicles to trade the underlying stock. Uh, so just something to keep in mind that NVIDIA will impact the markets. And most people are assuming that the earnings will be good uh, and maybe they'll even beat. But uh, if for some reason there's something that the market doesn't like, then this will not only pull down just the AI sector, but this can really cause a shuffle in the uh, overall market. But again, that's not uh, my base case. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So now we're going to get into the section with Cody. And so I have to give a disclaimer that neither Cody nor I are financial advisors. These are not buy or sell recommendations. And this is for informational and educational purposes only. And the last thing before we jump to Cody is I want to announce the t-shirt winners. And so we had two t-shirt winners from this week, and those were people who left good comments. And so we have Days306, and we also have Jin Zier 88 And so congratulations to both of you. You've won free t-shirts. And email webmaster at investorsunderground.com to claim that prize. And now let's go hang out with Cody. So Cody, welcome back to SCAN. Uh, it's been a wild market. And as soon as I saw all the small caps running, I knew that uh, we had to have you back on. So a uh, busy week for you. And I'm sure that you have a couple market thoughts. And then uh, we'll get into the uh, the main watches for the week. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah. So what have you been noticing? I mean, uh, we've definitely seen some more small cap runners uh, going. We had FFIE. We had a couple of ones that went up, you know, thousands of percent. Uh, we had the craziness with GameStop, with AMC, like, you know, the memeing that's coming back to the small cap. So there's a very different tone to the market than it's been for the last couple of months. And uh, I think that that can give some really good opportunities. So what do, what do you think about all of it? Yeah, and it's really just one tweet that kind of sent everybody back to the market, whether it was just Robinhood traders or everybody. It just uh, forced GameStop higher on the day. Um, you know, I think he's been tweeting a little bit too much, so it kind of ruined his cachet as far as the value of his tweets. People are kind of ignoring him already. So uh, that's one thing to, to, to be aware of on his end. But, you know, I'm all about the market action, and this obviously sent things going going nuts um so kind of like the, the thought process of the process for me of the week was that the first thing people kind of looked for was uh high short interest names and even i did the same thing early on to see what names were the most shorted and i think ffie was like 80 or 90 percent short and it was five cents so um it was kind of the first thing that i went after i kind of went after the names down the list and uh you know made about 400 percent off of it but then watching it go from five cents to three dollars and ninety cents is kind of brutal but a lot of the names that um i traded all kind of got a lot more momentum just because of that market action and that tweet good good uh yeah so are you are you thinking that the action is going to continue into next week do you think it's a one-off just kind of a blip and it's going to die down and that will go back to like kind of crypto land like the altcoins or do you think it's going to stay around in small caps for a while you know, I hope it does, but I'm going to kind of take it day by day. Um, I do know that now that FFIE has made such a big move, whether they dilute or not, I do anticipate uh, at least a bounce back trade because it always happens. So it's kind of like my main watch for all of next week, since you'll only have me on here once, is usually the third or fourth day after a big move up like this. <clears throat> so it could easily come back all the way down to like 20 cents, 25 cents. And they just have a morning where it fakes a low and then breaks out and maybe doubles on the day. So that's definitely one trade that I'm looking for. And that can happen even on all the other names because there were like six or seven that made some really big moves. Now, do I think it continues? You know, I don't know. AMC raised, or I don't know if they raised, I think they raised, and then also GameStop did a shelf today. So that can really easily kill all this momentum really fast. Uh, the only kind of saving grace is that the S&P 500 is at all-time highs, uh, and you know that can kind of just continue the run. I'm in agreement with Nate as well that we could have a wild summer, um, and this could just be the kickoff to it. So sometimes one event brings a lot of eyes back to the market, like old traders, and it just gets that, that uh, reinvigoration of trading. So for a lot of people, it's been 
three years, um, three or two years since they've actually traded. I know a lot of people got hammered in 2022. So it kind of goes along with the, the cycles that I'm used to is usually every three years we get a hot market. Um, so hopefully it is summertime. You never know. Uh, but you have the election coming up. So there's going to be a lot of stuff, debates and with, you know, presidential debates, sometimes they can slip stuff in there that, um, is relevant to the market, like a certain sector, like solars or railroads or whatever it might be. Um, those can become topics of interest. Yeah, definitely. And your point about market cycles, I feel like a lot of people have become really successful on the short side over the last couple of years because of the persistent failure of a lot of the small caps, how they just, they spike and they drop, they spike and they drop, and you've just seen it nonstop. And I feel like for people who are a little bit newer to the market or that's the only thing that they've experienced, uh, you have to be really cautious when a new cycle like this comes in where things can go, you know, 10 or 20 times higher than you than they historically have. And someone mm -hmm. might be basing a trading system off of statistics from the last couple of years. But if you go back even further, those statistics would change. And so just be uh, very careful about relying on old statistics in a new type of market. And just a, a phrase that I really like to uh, hammer home for my own trading is to look, think, and feel. And so, you know, looking at the technicals of a chart, thinking about what cycle we're in, why it's moving, what's driving it, the short interest, the options, and then really tuning into the feel. Does it feel trappy on the short side? Does it feel supported? Does it feel like something's going on? Uh, and you can get a much better read if you're taking those three things into account as opposed to just looking at statistics. Uh, so that's just something that uh, I keep in mind. But uh, Cody, what are your main watches for the week uh, and what are you looking at? Yeah, uh, I think FFI is going to be one of my main ones for the week just because of that uh, bounce move that I was telling you about. Some of the other ones are the ones that kind of followed at CRKN. Um, it had another big move, but a lot of these can easily just go back to right to dilution machines. So I'm keeping an open mind. Uh, however, Bitcoin, I'm definitely keeping on radar, and I use IBIT as the uh, ETF proxy for that. So this chart hasn't really died. Um, and I mentioned, I think it was last time I was with you guys, that these the moves that I've seen used to always provide this uh, line right here. Once it broke, in, in an older market, that was always a perfect short, where you could almost fade it all the way back to like a 50% move. But this, I've seen has actually provided a great long entry. Um, so, and even NVIDIA looks the exact same, but I would say the full sector that I'm looking at is also everything semi. So NVIDIA, TSM, uh, MU, uh, and AMD are the main ones. And then the other one single stock that I'm looking at is uh, Robinhood. So, it's actually uh, made an amazing move just all of this year, but it's actually really close to its breakout. And the, the reason I kind of like this one is that this chart is pretty thin all the way to the 33. So once we break out this level of you know 20s, this is a pretty thin area of volume from the 20s to the 30s. So you could see a pretty visual move. And it goes hand in hand with what we were saying. If the market does return, Robinhood is a great proxy for where a lot of traders will probably go back to, and it could provide some pretty awesome trades. And one other one that I want to add uh, is that I just saw that Turo did an IPO uh, there. They just filed their F S1 after hours. So uh, ride sharing stocks are kind of uh, just popped into my head as well. Excellent. Those are great. And just before I get into my main watches, when you're seeing some of these small caps really start to pick up or gain momentum, like an early on FFIE, what puts that on your radar? Is it the amount of volume? Is it the, something with the chart? Is it news? Is someone promoting it? What's really the driving factor that's kicking off these really small names? Uh, I think the FFIU one was, it literally was first on the most shorted list. Uh, and I think with the GME move, people just recognize, at least I did. I was like, well, what's, I tried to put my brain back in that moment of time in 2021 of what was happening. And everybody was going after the high short interest stocks because GME had like, what was it? 200 some odd percent at one point. So there was a, there was a week or a few days in there where it was just one after the next of the highest shorted stocks uh, all started going. Uh, so that was kind of like the first thing. As soon as GME went, I just started watching scanners. I saw FFIE pop up at like five cents. And I was like, I wonder why this one, you know, and the next process of the 10 minutes was just looking at the list of, 
highest short interest and it was first. So then I started to take along, held it overnight and you know, did pretty well on the trade, but obviously not uh, as good as I should have done. But that was kind of the reasoning behind this. And then I think the trend this week was just everybody was buying everything under 10 cents. And a lot of those names all started going. So no real rhyme or reason as to why is other than sometimes just the simplest criteria. Yep. Yeah. Just tuning in with the market, seeing what are the common denominators between the runners and then seeing if you can spot them early on. And then like you're saying, if you can position it and then, you know, try to make the trade free, if it turns into a double or something and then riding it almost more like an option uh, than, you know, normal equity, if it's small enough and if it's the right market cycle. So uh, that's great. And that's very helpful. Um, okay. So a couple of things that I'm watching this week, if you could pull up uh, NVAX. Uh, I've definitely been watching this one. I haven't traded it yet, but I feel like uh, it reminds me a lot of like that CVNA kind of, you know, gap up and consolidation where it's just in a, a channel. And I feel like we've been seeing that a lot in uh, different names in this market. So you can see how it's uh, had the initial gap up, you know, flush down, reclaim, and now that prior resistance is acting as support. And so I think that we could have two scenarios potentially play out. If the market continues to be hot, um, I think that you could get a another secondary move with this and this could break out uh, and maybe even move towards uh, that $20 range or something. But if it starts to stay heavy or if the market comes in or if you can see, you know, the bid pulled um, and again, you know, look, think and feel if it starts to feel like it's going to break down, then that will be on watch for some downside. And I'd probably play that with puts. And if it were breaking out, then I would either look for uh, an equity position long or possibly some calls. So that one is on my radar. And then also GME. Um, I traded GME a decent amount this week. I had uh, a couple of calls and a couple of puts. Nothing turned into a huge trade with it, but just as it's kind of, uh, you know, when you have a, such a large move like this, the secondary moves, like the consolidations, a lot of times you're moving 10 or you know $15 with those secondary moves. And so even if you don't catch like the first move or the primary move, there's still a lot of meat on the bone to kind of Pick your spots, go in and out, you know, look for the bounces, look for the fade off. So uh, it's just it reminds me a lot of like a, a very small cap chart like that would this would all play out in one day. But it's just a larger name and it's playing out over the course of a week or two. Uh, and so I'll be looking for pockets of if it seems like it's starting to get a little bit trappy or if it wants to ramp up. I'd have no problem playing some calls on that. But also uh, considering how how many people are now bagged on this, uh, I could see this also staying heavy. So, again, it's about having. Two plans for me, uh, picking spots, drawing those key levels, and then uh, giving it an attempt with either puts or calls uh, for for my kind of uh, trading. Um, and then another name that I'm watching is Reddit, so RDDT. And this was a name that uh, Judah and I talked about on last Sunday scan, where we were really talking about that, you know, that long term kind of uh, left side of the V, right side of the V concept. And we saw the same thing with uh, DJT. Uh, a while ago, but uh, Judah was spot on with he thought that this was going to kind of go back to the highs and potentially even clear out those highs. So uh, that is on watch for me this week of if it starts to get to the highs and speed up and maybe a parabolic, I might be able to clip uh, some of that on the long side. And then, you know, once we get into some territory where uh, you have it's very long, heavy, uh, it gets top heavy and it starts to do that failed follow through pattern that we know. And if it starts to feel heavy, then I would have no problem getting some puts on this. So again, I'm looking at things that have good range, uh, something where I can chart a key level on it. And then if I think it'll have a significant move, either stuffing into that level and then flushing down or kind of building up to a level and then possibly having a, a parabolic, I'm interested in those kinds of charts. Uh, and then NVIDIA has uh, earnings coming up. So I'm gonna be watching uh, NVIDIA, but then also uh, I think a way that I might try to play it is with SOXL, and that is the 3X bullish um, semiconductor ETF. And so I think that if you have, you know, some blowout earnings or some uh, really good news with NVIDIA, you could you could really bump the entire sector because so many of the names have been consolidating and the premium, the options premium on NVIDIA are probably uh, pretty jacked going into the week. And so I might be looking for a, a lower premium way that can still have that uh, solid range. So. SOXL will definitely be on watch for me. And again, uh, the same thing if earnings are disappointing or if it really flushes down and the rest of the sector follows, uh, I can look at proxy names with relative weakness uh, for that. And then 
the last thing that I really had on watch was Mara, M-A-R-A. And, you know, like we were talking about, we really had some speculation come back into the market. Uh, it started to heat up a lot. Bitcoin's had a nice recovery. I mean, it's uh, close to 67K right now, up from the lows of, you know, the mid 50s. So it's had a nice move. And uh, I think that Mara and the other names, you know, they've been heavy. It's kind of been an uphill battle. But I think if Bitcoin undeniably breaks out, that these names are going to follow. And uh, that's something that I'll be interested in. And I actually have some uh, 21 strike calls going into uh, next week. And so we'll see if those play out. But I am sized appropriately for options trade, especially something that I'm swinging. So that's something to uh, always consider when talking about options. But that's all I have on watch. Do you have any other uh, watches or anything else uh, you want to comment on, Cody? Uh, nothing really popped up as far as we, even when you were talking, but I, I definitely have a feeling the market is um, likely to go higher. Um, we had a lot of events that happened in the last month or so, and now it just seems like everything's nice and calm. So the market hates uncertainty. So uh, the only thing I really have to look for f to get bearish are like existential things going on in the world. Like there's, there's only been a few times that I've ever been like super bearish the market in you know, like 14 years. Uh, so the, the only events that really happened were COVID. I kind of was really paying attention to that in February of that year. I was like, this could be a big thing. Uh, and then when interest rates started to get really cranked up, uh, those are kind of like the two things I was like, these are big events. Uh, I definitely didn't trade COVID as well, but you know, overall, I think the market's likely higher. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't be shocked if we go past 550 during the summer uh, on the S&P 500. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that unless something else really interferes, uh, you know, money is it's always trying to find pockets to go to. And uh, I think equities are an attractive asset class as long as things like NVIDIA are still reporting good earnings and the other companies are able to have the capital expenditures to really fuel that. And so we have, you know, we had decent earnings this cycle. Uh, we have the Fed uh, basing their their kind of moves off the inflation data, which has leveled out a little bit. It was starting to ramp up uh, about a month ago, but it started to level out. So uh, I think that all those things basically, uh, you know, I don't want to say force, but they encourage people and fund managers to really uh, take some extra risk by going into equities. But uh, yeah, those were uh, great watches, Cody, and I appreciate you coming on. And uh, I'll definitely be looking to you in the week ahead uh, as you scan for some of these small caps, and I'd be happy to join you on the long side. But uh, Thank you for coming on. Yeah, of course. It was a pleasure. Yeah. And then for everyone, uh, just a reminder to like and comment. And then we are running a special sale that we are leaving open for Sunday Scan viewers. And so you can click the link in the description or we'll see if we can get it to pop up on the screen. Uh, and that is a, a steal for IU membership. So I definitely encourage people to check that out. But otherwise, everyone have a great week. And Cody, I'll see you in the room. Yeah, sounds good.